In this video, I'll be reviewing Cut and Wrap, which is an amazing Blender add-on for cutting out transparent images and creating decals. So the add-on creator contacted me and asked me if I'd like to check out this add-on and review it, so thank you for sending this over for me to review. And I also have an affiliate link to the add-on in the description, so if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link then I'll earn a small commission, so that's also a great way to help support this channel. But I only recommend content to my audience which I really stand behind. Now this add-on would have been super useful for my recent tutorial which I posted where I created a bird nest. So in that tutorial I take this texture of these leaves and I have to manually use the knife tool to cut out all the leaves, but then I also want to add like a displacement to the leaves to kind of make them move around a little bit to look like they're moving in the wind, and so I have to like cut out a grid shape. So it takes a long time, I do a couple of leaves in the video and then I just cut through the tutorial to when I'm finished cutting out all the leaves, but that takes a lot of time and this add-on is a perfect add-on for speeding up your workflow when creating something like that where you have for example some leaves and you need to cut them out and then add geometry to them so that you could move them around or add displacement. Now there are two different versions of this product. There is the full version and the light version. Now the light version doesn't come with all the features so I'm going to be reviewing the full version. So in a new scene in Blender, what you can do once you download the add-on is you can just drag and drop the add-on zip file into Blender, just drop it there and then click on OK and that will install the add-on. Then if I click on Edit and go to the User Preferences, what I'm going to do is just click on the Save Preferences button so it's always turned on in my project. And if you go to the Extensions tab, you can see here's the add-on so it's the Cut and Wrap. So to access the add-on, you want to hit the N key to open up the side panel and then if you scroll right down here, you can click on the Cut and Wrap add-on. So let's start adding in some images that we can cut out and wrap. So you can see there's the source tab here on the very top. And so there is folder, there's file, and there is alpha mask image. Now the folder is for if you want to select a folder. And then when you click on generate cutout, it's going to cut out all of the images for that folder. So if you want to like do a bunch of them at once, maybe you have like 20 images or 100 images and you want to do them all at once, you can do it here by adding the folder. However, I'm just going to start by doing one single file. So I'll use the second one here, which is file. So let's click on the file icon. So now I'm going to jump into the folder where I have some different images. I've downloaded these images from Pixabay and they also have a transparent background. So I'm just going to start by choosing this frog one here and then click on the accept button. So I'm just going to delete the cube for now just to get it out of the way and then I can click on the generate cutout button. And we'll just wait for this to finish. You can see there's a loading bar but it shouldn't take too long and there we go it's already finished. So I'll go into the material preview and you can see added in the image but then it used the transparency to cut out the image. Now there's a bunch of different settings that you can use to customize this because for example if I go into edit mode you can see it was a little bit low quality and so it actually kind of cut out the side here of the frog but that's because the image doesn't have very much subdivisions so I can just turn up the subdivisions here so there's the X subdivisions and the Y subdivisions so I could maybe turn these to like a 20 so I'll turn these both to 20 and then I can delete the frog and click on generate cutout again and you can see there now it's finished so if I hit tab to go into edit mode you can see the object now has a lot more geometry to work with so that looks really great so we have a really nice nice cutout there. Now what's really useful about the X and Y subdivisions is that if you have a really long object, like let me just click on the file icon, and this time I'm going to choose this pine tree image from Pixabay, so I'll just open up this image. So what I can do is turn the Y subdivisions to maybe like a 60, but then I'll leave the X subdivisions at just a 20, and I'll click on generate cutout. So now if I go into edit mode, you can see there's a lot of more topology up and down, so it's more even. If I were, however, to just turn both of these to 20, you can see this one here, the faces are a lot longer because the tree was a lot longer, but it, there's 20 on the X and 20 on the Y, so it's not quite an even size. But you can see with the second one, there's a lot more geometry up and down. So this one here was 20 by 20, whereas this one was 20 by 60. So if you have a long cutout, then you can just change the subdivisions. Now what I'm gonna do is delete all my objects, and I'm going to add a new cutout. So I'll click on this file icon. And this time I'm gonna choose this one here, so it's like this uh, icon which would be on a box. Let's click on accept, and then I can generate the cutout. So here's the cutout, and you can see it did work pretty well, but another useful feature of the add-on is that you can change the subdivision mode. So you can see right here the subdivision mode, right now it's set to radial, but what I could do is change this instead to grid, and then I can delete this, and then just generate the cutout again. So now you can see if I go into edit mode, you can see everything is nice and sharp, and it's like back and forth, so it's more of a grid shape instead of the radial shape. So this could be really useful if you're generating a cutout like this where things are more square, or of course you could use the radial shape if you want to. Now another really useful tool of the add-on is the separate islands. So I'm going to turn on separate islands and then I'm going to generate the cutout again. 
And so you can see there's the loading bar and it's generating each one individually. So now you can see as I move these around, it's actually broken up the cutouts. So if you have a large image with transparency and you wanna actually cut these out and make them their own objects, you can separate the islands. Now one issue with this is that they're kind of all on top of each other on default. So I'm just gonna delete all the cutouts. So what you can do is open up the placement and you can see on the placement here, you can click on next to each other. And then I can click on generate cutout again. And you can see it finished and it automatically just placed them all next to each other. So that's very useful if you have a big image and you're cutting out a bunch of different objects from that image. So I'm just gonna delete all the images and then I'll click here on the file and then click on backspace and enter to get rid of it. I'm now gonna choose the folder type. So I'll click on this file icon. So I'm gonna to go to the same folder and then click on the accept button. And then you can see right down here on the placement, we still have this set to next to each other. So I'll just click on generate cutout. And again, you can see there's a loading bar, so it's cutting out all the images. And so this is really useful because it added in all the different images that I had in my folder and it cut them out all at once. And then it also took these and cut them out individually because they're individual pieces. So this is very useful and this really will speed up so much time than using the knife tool and manually cutting it out yourself. Now the last option that I wanna show you is the alpha mask image. And so this is for if you have like an image which is black and white for an opacity map, but it doesn't actually have transparency. So first what I'm gonna do is click on this file icon. And I'm gonna to go to the same folder, but then I'm gonna go inside this leaf set here. So this is a texture pack from Ambient CG. I'll have the link to it in the video description. So you can see it has a color, a roughness, and a normal, but instead of having transparency, it has an opacity map, which is white and black. So I'll click on accept. Then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna add in the color here into the file. So I'll click on this icon and I'll go back to the same folder, but then this time I'm just gonna add in the color map and that doesn't have any transparency either. So now here on the subdivisions, I thought I would turn this up a little bit just so that it is a little bit more detailed. So I'll turn these both to like a 20. And then also I wanna choose separate islands. And so this is gonna make every single leaf be its own object. And then also if I click here on the placement, I'm gonna change the placement type to next to each other so that all the different leaves are in their own object and then next to each other so it's easier to see them. So now I can just go up here to the top and I can click on generate cutout. And it's finished, and so here are all the different leaves. So if I go into edit mode, you can see it has quite a bit of geometry because I chose the 20 on the subdivisions. And so all the leaves are really nicely cut out, and so that is super useful. Now another useful feature is that I can actually change the origin. For an object like this, I might want the origin to be on the very bottom so that I can easily place it on like a branch or use geometry nodes to kind of set it up or whatever I want to do. So right here on the origin, right now it's in the center, but I can change it to bottom center instead. So I'm just gonna delete all the leaves and then I'll generate the cutout again. And it finished, and so now if you take a look down here, you can see that all the origins are in the very bottom of the middle. So you might wanna just go into edit mode and customize them further by like dragging them around like that and sticking it on the very bottom. But if you just wanna get it pretty close, you can see now if I like double tap R to rotate this, you can see it's gonna rotate from the very bottom because that's where the origin is. So it's just another very useful feature to speed up your workflow. Now there's also this mask offset. So if I kinda of zoom in here to these images, you can see there is gonna be like a bit of an offset or a bit of an extra space. So if you you turn this offset around that's either going to make that transparent space larger or smaller. So I have set up the leaves now but the leaf textures also have a normal and a roughness. So what I'm going to do is click over here to go to the shading workspace and we'll just kind of drag these images back here, drag this back over here. So you can see I added the color map and the opacity map but I still want to add the roughness map and the normal map. So what I can do is enable the node wrangler by clicking on edit, going to the preferences, and then just go to the add-ons tab and you can just search for node and just enable the node wrangler add-on. So with the node wrangler enabled, I'm just gonna select the images and then delete them. And then if I select the principal shader, I'll press control shift T. And control shift T will bring up Blender's file browser and I'm just gonna select all the images and then click on the principal texture setup. So you can see now we've added the base color, the roughness, the alpha and the normal, but the image is still cut out. And so you can see now it has like that roughness map and it clearly has the bump map or the normal map because you can see the leaf looks bumpy. So then what I need to do is just select all the leaves and then lastly shift select this leaf last and I want to hit control L and I can just link the materials. So now you can see the leaves are still cut out but they all have the same material and again this add-on would have been super useful in my bird nest tutorial series because I had to manually go around and cut out all the leaves but this add-on really speeds up the process.
Now, if you scroll down to the very bottom, there is this mesh cleanup option. So what I'm gonna do is just click on generate cutout and I'm gonna generate a cutout of a mug. And so here's the mug. So if I go into edit mode, you can see that there is a big hole here in the mug. And so I might wanna cut out those faces. And so right now, if you go down here to the mesh cleanup, you can see it says keep faces inside holes and that's turned on on default. But let me just turn it off and I'll just delete the cutout and then I will generate a new cutout. So the new cutout is finished and you can see if I go into edit mode, you can see it deleted the faces there inside the handle for the mug. Now, if you uncheck the remove unwanted faces, it's going to basically cut it out, but it's not actually going to delete those faces. So make sure you keep the remove unwanted faces turned on if you want to delete the faces where the holes are. And then another useful feature you might wanna use is the keep only outline. So I'm gonna turn on the keep only outline and I'll generate the cutout again. And it's finished, so if I go into edit mode now, you can see it doesn't have all the subdivisions in the very center, so it's more low poly. So if you wanted to cut out an image but have it just be like one big face, then you could do that with the keep only outline. Now another thing you might notice is that the steam is invisible and you can see that's because it's a little bit transparent. So what I'm gonna do here is click on material and mass to open up these settings, and you can see there is an alpha threshold. So I'm gonna delete the cutout and I'll turn the alpha threshold down to zero. And then let's go up here to the top and we're gonna generate the cutout again. And so this time you can see that it kept that alpha transparency because this part of the mug is a little bit, it's kind of like half transparent. And so if you turn the alpha threshold down, now it's going to keep all of the transparent areas. Now there's also the use emission. So if I just go into the rendered viewport mode, you can see if I turn on use emission, it's just going to make it an emission. So it's basically like emitting light. And then there's also the use color as alpha. And if you turn this on, it's gonna make any black part of the image is transparent. So I'm just gonna delete this cutout and I'm gonna choose a new cutout. And so I have this image here from Pixabay and so I'm just going to click on that and then just open the image. And then I'm just gonna generate the cutout. So you can see here's the image, it added it in. Now it didn't actually cut anything out and that's because there isn't any transparency in the image. However, there is this black part of the image and then there's like kind of maybe the sunset or a sun behind the ship, which is blue, but the rest of it is black. Well, if I go down here to the material and mask and click on use color as alpha, it's going to make the black parts transparent. So if you have an image which has a black background and you wanna turn that into a transparent image, then you can just check mark the use color as alpha. And there's also a few other settings like like the alpha thresholds, you can kind of drag that threshold around if it's not like super black. And there's also a color ramp value. So you can drag the color ramp value around to kind of adjust the transparency. So I've generated this tree image again. And so for this image, I use the subdivisions of 50. So it's a little bit more detailed, but you can see on the edges here, it does look a bit bumpy. So there's this really cool smooth option. So if I click on smooth the outline, that is gonna smooth out the outline. And then you can turn up the iterations here. So I can just turn up the iterations a bit. Now, if you turn it up too much, it is gonna start to distort the image. So you can see the image is definitely looking distorted if you turn it up too much. And also if on the generation, if you are using a too low subdivisions, then it's definitely gonna distort the image more. So if you want to use the smoothing, then I'd recommend turning up the subdivisions and then just don't turn the smoothing iterations up too high. And then you can also change the smoothing type. So there's two different types of smoothing. There's this first smoothing type and then this other smoothing type. And I think the second smoothing type definitely works a bit better. But you can also try using the first type if you want to use that. It does kind of move the image around a bit more. So I think the second one is a little bit better. So that's the first part of the add-on, but the add-on also has kind of a second part, which is the shrink wrap option. So you can shrink wrap your cutouts onto other objects and it sort of works like a decal. And so I'm going to use the shrink wrap to shrink wrap the image onto this object. So I'll click on use shrink wrap. And so then what I wanna do is click on the place on target face, and then I can choose a part of the face that I want to shrink wrap it to. So for the target object, I'm gonna choose this cube. So select the cube, and then there is this face index. So if I click on the eyedropper here, I can actually choose any spot of my cube. So I'm just gonna click right down here, and then it's actually gonna shrink wrap it to that area. And there's also a few more settings like the snap mode and also the wrap method. I'm just gonna leave these on the default. And there's also an offset to kind of offset it away from from the object. So I'm now just gonna click on generate cutout. And you can see it finished and as well as generating the cutout, it also snapped it onto this object. So that's very useful. But if I click on the eyedropper here and then click on another area like this corner here, let's now click on generate cutout again. And you can see this time the new cutout was over here on this side, so that's really useful. It was a little bit too big, but I can just scale that down there. So that's really cool that you can just choose a position and it actually drops it onto that area. So if you're adding things like stickers or decals or other things onto an object, this is very useful. Now, after you shrink wrap a cutout, you might wanna move it around to a separate location. But you can see when I move it around, sometimes 
settings, it comes a bit distorted. So if this happens, you can just click on the update cutout button and then just drag it over there and then that's going to fix it. But a better way to move around the cutout is to click on the slide cutout button. So click on slide cutout and now you can see the cutout is kind of sliding around the object and it's just snapping to the correct face. Now there's two more settings that I haven't gone over, which is the random rotation and random scale. And this is used for if you are using many cutouts at once. So I'm going to open up the source tab and I'll get rid of this file here and I'll instead choose the folder. And I'm going to go to my cutouts folder and then click on accept and then I will generate the cutout to cut them out all at once. And you can see it placed all the cutouts and it also shrink wrapped them because I had the shrink wrap option already turned on when I generated the cutouts. But you can see they're a bit too large. So if I open up the random scale, I could just turn down the max scale and then click on randomize selected scale. And they're all going to be a lot smaller. So you can just change the minimum size and the maximum size to kind of randomize that. And then just click on the button to update it. Now another cool feature is the random rotation. So I can open this up and I can just change the random rotation. Although I do need to make sure I select all the cutouts and then I can move around the random rotation. So if you just select one of them, it's just going to edit that one. If you hit the A key to select all of them, you can see I can kind of randomize this and rotate this. So this could be useful if you have an object and you want to like randomly stick a bunch of stickers on it and kind of move the stickers around randomly. You could just kind of place all the stickers around the object. So I can highly recommend this add-on and if you're interested in purchasing, then you can purchase it through my affiliate links in the description and purchase it on either Gumroad or Superhive. And if you do purchase through my affiliate links, then I'll earn a small commission. So that's a great way to help support this channel. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.